Hey everyone, so today we're going to be talking about P2. This is percentages. We're gonna break this down into two days. So this is day one. Um, so something that everyone should know is that ballpark math is good enough for most situations. Um, the reason why we rely a lot on calculators for the most part is because when you're at a store, um, sometimes you're trying to find what like 20% off of something that's 19.99, um, and 19.99 is not a nice number. Um, but if you round that to like $20, um, then figuring out the math is pretty easy and then you just might be off by like a cent or two and it's okay So let's uh, let's talk about how we can do this ballpark math. So here's the first situation. We have 19.9 um, .9, so like $19.90 divided by 10.1 and that can represent like ten dollars and ten cents um, So we're trying to figure out what number that comes out to on the number line. So I have a number line here We're, we're trying to figure out where this is. We don't need a calculator for this So the first thing that we're gonna do is we can see here on the side we have 19.99 and we're gonna round this. And so the closest number to that is 20. Um, and then we have 10.1 and the closest number to that is 10. We're picking integers, right? And then 20 divided by 10 is really easy. That's just two. So then 19.9 over 10.1 is approximately two. Now, we rounded. Um, so we know that the answer is not exactly two. And so the question just becomes, okay, did I overestimate or did I underestimate? So basically this question is, Am I over here on the number line or am I over here on the number line? What I did first is we took this numerator and we made it bigger. And now we're gonna take what we learned from chapter M and we're gonna figure out, okay, so making a numerator bigger, does that make a numerator, or sorry, does that make the number bigger or smaller? So let's look at with a very um, obvious example. If I have two over one and I make the numerator bigger, I have just made the whole number bigger. I went from two to three, right? So overestimating like this, making this number bigger, running up, I mean, has made the number bigger. I have overestimated. And so now let's look at this, but from the denominator's point of view. So from the denominator, I made the denominator smaller. So now let's see what happens if I make a denominator smaller, the number on the denominator smaller. So I have one third. If I make the denominator smaller, that makes a half. So now you ask yourself, which is bigger, a third or a half? Well, a half is bigger. So this means I made this number bigger again, right? So I've overestimated once more, which means the number two is an overestimate. It's too big of an answer. That means my real answer is somewhere a little bit smaller. Um, that means my answer is actually in here somewhere. Your, your real answer, your true answer. And so that way you don't have to actually do any sort of calculations. You know that two is a pretty good guess, but it's actually a little bit less than two. Um, and the meanings of percentage, so we talked about that a little bit in P1. There's a lot of different ways that you can represent percents. Um, ratios are a way to do that, AKA fractions. So that you can see in this example here, we have um, different representations for 20%. So we have 20%, which is 20 over 100. We can reduce that to two over 10. We can reduce that to one over five. And there's many, many other ways that we can talk about 20%. I can draw a pie and cut off a fifth of that pie and visually represent what a 20% is. What I don't want people to um, assume, which is an incorrect assumption, is that 20% means one in every 20. That's very incorrect thinking. I, I can see where you come up with that, but that's not actually true. 20% means 20 out of 100. Remember we talked about what percent means, it's por cada 100, it's for every 100, um, not one in every 20. So let's look at a couple of different calculations on how we do percents. Um, I broke them up into the different types that you can see so that that way you can try to get a pattern and recognize what kind of problems you're being asked and then how to solve them. I'm going to solve all of these problems with pictures, no calculators. So the first question is, um, what is 30% of 110? Um, and so I wrote right here the type, this is like a, what is blank percent of blank? This is how it's all these kind of problems. Um, and so what is 30% of 110? So what I've taken is I've taken this big rectangle and it's going to represent 100%. So then in this case, it's representing my entire 180. And each of these rectangles in here, there's 10 of these. So each of these represents 10%. So if I take 180 and I divide it into the 10, uh, the 10 little rectangles that I have in here, how much is each of these rectangles worth? Well, if I divide it by 10, that just means each one is worth 18, right? And then you can go on and on and on. So each, of, each little rectangle here represents 18. And as a percentage, that represents 10%. So if I wanna to get to 30%, that just means I'm looking at three of these because each one is 10, right? 10, 20, 30. Um, so asking what is 30% of 180 is the same thing as basically asking what's 18 times three. And that's not a hard thing to do. Um, 18 times three is 54. 30% um, of 180 is 54. No calculators needed, no um, weird formulas, no algebra, nothing like that, just pictures. So here's type two. Type two is 150 is what percent of 25? So we're doing this the other way around. 
This is a different type. It's blank is what percent of this other number. Um, and so I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm, I picked smaller boxes here. 100%, um, this whole box is 100%, it represents 25. Um, I want to get to 150. So this box is not big enough. I need to get more and more boxes, right? So a second box would be, would be 25 plus 25 is 50. And then I can add more and more and more. So I can actually add up all of these. Now let's see if that comes out to 150. This 25 and 25 is 50. All the way these four are 100 and these are 50. So this whole thing is 150. And so then if I add up the percents, how many boxes do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Each box is 100%. So that comes out to 600%. So that's my answer. 150 is 600% of 25. That makes sense. I need to get a lot more copies of 25. So I need a lot more than 100% to get to my goal of 150. Um, so here's a different type of question. 10% um, is what, 10% uh, of what number is 11? So here is my entire rectangle that represents 100%. I don't know what number that 100% represents. That's what I'm trying to figure out this time. Um, but I did the same thing. I broke them up into 10 pieces. Each of these pieces represents 10%, but that 10% also represents 11. So how would I figure out what the entire thing is? Well, I would just multiply you know, I take 11 and add it 10 times, or I would take 11 and add or multiply by 10. Um, and so that number is not too hard to do. That was 110. Um, and then we have different percent increases and decreases. So, um, so percent increase and decrease is something that you see every day, all the time, especially when you go shopping. Um, anytime you hear, hey, taxes 8%, um, that means, what does that mean? That means I'm taking the amount that your, um, whatever's in your cart would normally be, um, I'm going to figure out what 8% of that is, and then I'm going to tack it on top. You're going to um, pay more by 8%, right? That's what taxes is. And so that is a percent increase. I've increased the amount that you're actually going to pay. So taxes is an example of that. Um, having a coupon for 20% off, um, how do you calculate that? You take the amount that you have in your cart, you calculate 20% of that, and then you subtract it off that amount. Um, that means I am decreasing the amount of money that you're going to have to pay in the end, um, and so 20, uh, coupon for 20% off is, a, is an example of a percent decrease. Um, and so that we can see problems like this. I'll try to show you a couple uh, pictures of this. Uh, the first one is the cost of a deluxe movie theater ticket is $22 after a 10% increase. Uh, what was the price of the ticket before the increase? Okay, so here's a picture. It's a little bit, um, it's a little bit more steps than the ones before, but it's still, you can still do this with pictures. So you have your original rectangle broken up into the 10 pieces, right? Because we're doing 10%. This represents the original price of the ticket, which we don't know what it is. That's why I put a question mark number of dollars but it represents the original price of the ticket. Um, I then take 10% of the original price. So here's the original price. 10% is one of these rectangles. So I add another rectangle. Um, and then if I include the original price plus this extra rectangle, I get $22. So what I can do is I can say, okay, this $22 represents 11 of these rectangles. So then what I can do is I can take the 22 and I can divide it by 11 to get the price of each rectangle. Um, and if I divide by 11, that means each rectangle is worth $2. All of them are worth $2, even this one. You, this one's worth $2. And you can double check. You can add up all of these 11 rectangles that are worth $2 each and you come up with $22. And again, each rectangle is worth 10%. Um, so you have your $22. Now, if you wanna figure out the original price, what do you need to do? Well, you need to add all of these rectangles except for the red one because the red one is the new price, not the original price. So you're gonna take your two and you're gonna multiply by 10 because there's 10 rectangles. It's gonna come out to be $20. So the original price was $20. Now, the only little thing that I wanna say here is you can't, you can't, 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 way too many people do this. Um, they calculate 10% of $22 and just subtract it off. 10% of $22 is $2.20. And if you subtract that off, you're not gonna get that the original price was $20 you're gonna get that it was like, what, $19.80 or whatever. And so that's that's not the same thing. Why? Because 10% of $22 is a bigger number than 10% of $20. Those are two very different numbers. So when you do percent increases, you can't just do the percent decrease to the bigger number and get the same answer. That's not how that works. So here's an example of percent decrease. Uh, the guitar that you've been eyeing has been marked 30% off, so now you you go and you buy it. Um, without tax, the guitar comes out to be um, $280. The, what was the original price of the guitar before the discount? So again, picture. Here is my uh, rectangle that represents 100%. Each of them are broken down into 10 pieces. And this represents the original price. I don't know what the original price was. So that's some dollars. I'm, I'm gonna figure that out. Um, but you do know that if you take 30%, so here's 30%. 
it represents three rectangles. If I take the original price and I remove three of these rectangles, it's 30%, then what I'm left with is $280. That's what you paid for. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna see that 280 represents seven of these rectangles. So I'm gonna take 280 divided by seven and get 40. Each of these rectangles represents $40. It also represents 10%. Um, and so what we can do now is this 10% and this $40 also holds true to this 30%. So what we can do to find the original price is we can take the $40 and times 10 to get us the 100% and to get us the original price, which means the original price here was 400 bucks. Again, just wanna reiterate, it's the same kind of thing that I said last time. You can't just find 30% of $280 and add on to it and expect to get the right answer. That's not how that works because 30% of $280 is not the same as 30% of $400. It's two very different numbers.